I think we laid a lot of the groundwork that we need to do. And um, this next section, we'll get into kind of everything people can do um, to improve it individually. But before we get to kind of like how you, the person, can do it, um, we did have some questions from subscribers who said, you know, they have kids and they want to improve their bone health. And we've talked about how important it is. So before we get to the individual, is there anything in particular, any advice you would have for people who have kids on those very important ages, you know, the eight to 20 on what they can do so they can really optimize the bone health? Yeah, I think this is very important. You know, I, I, when I stop to think about all of the things that, you know, parents got on their plate to try to help their kids with during this relatively narrow window that your kids are in your house and, and, and therefore somewhat amenable to your influence. Um, you know, I think the most important thing probably comes down to being adequately nourished and being very active and in particular being very active in things that load bones. So one of the things that was a bit surprising to me was that running didn't have a greater impact on a BMD. So in a moment, we'll pull up that figure, Nick, that I think is pretty interesting that shows all of the different sports and how they impact BMD. Now, I'm going to posit that the running one has a confounder in there. Because if you think about it, running puts a lot of force on muscles, right? I mean, especially when you think about the hips, which are two of the three bones that are attached to muscles that feel exper that experience great force during running. So why is it that running where you're potentially at, at least at the knees experiencing eight times your body weight with each impact, why wouldn't that do more? And I've been thinking about this for some time and maybe somebody knows the answer, but my suspicion is that the confounder here is body weight and BMI, right? And that when you talk about elite runners, and usually these are studied in elite runners, they're very weight conscious, right? Running is running and cycling are the ultimate strength to weight uh, ratio sports. And I do wonder if we're seeing basically malnourished runners. And what do I mean by that? Basically people that are, you know, BMI is too low, it might be perfect for being a runner, but it's too low for optimizing bone mineral density. So, I guess this is a long-winded way of saying running might not be enough. Um, so obviously running is a great thing to do and it comes with a lot of benefit, but you probably want to make sure that your kids, both boys and girls, are doing other sports that involve more power. So probably things that involve jumping and actually lifting heavy things. Um, this is kind of a great plug for rucking. You know, I talked, mentioned Michael Easter briefly at the outset. I mean, one of the things that Michael writes about in his book, The Comfort Crisis, is the importance of just walking with heavy stuff. So either doing a farmer's carry, doing a ruck, which I love. You know, I try to ruck five days a week. So it's, you know, backpack with heavy weight in it and just walking around and always trying to find a hill to walk up and down, kind of loading myself without the knee joints being susceptible to that. Um, so going back to the kids, I think we just want to make sure BMI is not too low. Hormone dysfunction is not there. Um, energy availability is, is there body fat's not too low. All of those things that tend to occur, obviously smoking, you know, you know, uh, we obviously want to make sure nobody's smoking, but as, as, as we just talked about kids beneath the age of 16 are uniquely susceptible to this. So, um, Again, it's pretty straightforward, lots of nutrition, lots of physical activity, and specifically physical activity that builds muscular strength. And because I think that's going to apply the greatest force to the bone and the bones, as we talked about, are mechanical, uh, mechanical sensory uh, entities that are going to remodel in proportion to how much mechanical stress they're under. So again, lifting heavy stuff matters. And that doesn't mean that 12 year olds need to be deadlifting three times their body weight, but we also don't want to shy away from kids lifting things. I'm Peter Atia, 
This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights. You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.